Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of this episode of Tubules Live, where we'll be hearing from Mr. Mahesh Kumar. Mr. Kumar is an oral maxillofacial surgeon. He qualified from King's in 1990, and thereafter completed a number of courses to further develop his career in medicine. He has a special interest in head and neck cancer, and currently works in several Northwest London hospitals. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over straight over to Mr. Mahesh Kumar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your kind invitation, and good evening to everyone here in London and around the world. And my remit today is to talk about um, mouth cancer and uh, the management of this condition. I will cover oral cancer itself, neck lumps, go over some clinical cases and reconstruction and rehabilitations of these patients. One of the objectives will be, as Philip has already uh, over, uh, got over, is to able, be able to undertake a 30 second effective mouth examination, appreciate the normal anatomy of the mouth, and then understand the management of head and neck cancer. And also, in northwest London, how the referral pathways for these patients is. Head and neck, this is a slide to show a uh, histopathology of a case of head and neck cancer, a squamous cell carcinoma, which is 90% of all head and neck cancers. This case is a 55-year-old uh, Asian lady who presented to me a few years now uh, ago with a limitation in mouth opening. She had an ulcer in the back of the mouth on the right-hand side in the retromolar region, and she had increasing amount of pain. We did a biopsy, did some CT and MRI scans or staging investigations, and the confirmation of squamous cell carcinoma diagnosis was made. We decided the patient would be effectively treated with surgery followed by most likely adjuvant or post-operative radiotherapy. We put all this to the patient and she went away to think about it and a month later returned with this. She had gone to India and decided to have homeopathic treatment for this condition and as you can see it's started to fungate through her cheek and uh, also into her neck and became more or less a palliative case and in fact this was what two months later she presented with a horrible fungating tumour which was anaerobic smell and um, unfortunately she had a sad painful death which uh, could have been possibly uh, if treated earlier on uh, managed and effectively cured so on the back of this, I'd like to talk to you about head and neck cancer in the United Kingdom. It's actually the fifth most common uh, malignancy. And unlike uh, other cancers, there's not a screening, um, effective screening measure in the UK or around the world. It's, as I said, m more common than uh, cervical cancer, yet there's a huge cervical sc cancer screening uh, measure in the UK. Uh, it, it's a, in the U United Kingdom, we have... A, around about 6,000 new cases per year and cervical cancer is only about 2,500 to 3,000. We know that the usual suspects are tobacco and alcohol and new evidence is suggesting HPV and some smaller genetic links. Males are more effective than, affected than females but this is changing due to um, habits within the female population with smoking and drinking and now is becoming more uh, equal, uh, equal amongst uh, the sexes. It is ha a major problem for patients with, um, with cancer because it has uh, impact on every aspect of their lives. Their speech, their facial aesthetics, chewing, uh, swallowing and has a huge psychological overlay as well. And uh, I will go into this. So why is it such a, a difficult thing to diagnose? Because one could see this uh, man with a, an ulcer on his tongue. It should really be something that should be quite obvious to, to firstly notice and also then to manage. Um, but yet it still has a five-year survival of about 45 to 50%. These are f across all stages of um, oral cancer. As I said, the majority are squamous cell carcinomas, about 90%. And there has been some um, improvement in the survival over the last 40 years. Usually uh, we, we, we refer to this due to 
the fact that there's increased screening and catching earlier um, cancers uh, as T1s or smaller cancers and effectively managing them. Um, so, and also the preventive programs we're finding are uh, useful. So the mo across all the board, the most important factors, as I've mentioned already, tobacco and alcohol, the, um, this is particularly in oral and oral pharyngeal carcinomas. And as I've said already, it's a lifestyle disease. So if we can influence our patients to reduce smoking and also drinking, then we can have an effective preventive program. Uh, statistically, approximately 90% of patients with mouth cancer are, are tobacco users. Smokers are six times more likely than non-smokers to, to develop mouth cancer. And there's a habit uh, that's banned in this country, but use of smokeless tobacco um, is, uh, gives a 50% increase in developing mouth cancer. Statistics show that if you um, stop smoking, then you are at a risk of 6% of developing a second cancer. Whereas if you continue on smoking, then that goes to uh, 37%. So people who stop chewing, uh, using tobacco, even after many years, can reduce their chance of developing mouth cancer. So the best uh, advice is to kick the habit. So those who smoke and drink, you have a synergistic effect, and therefore 15%, uh, 15 times the risk of developing mouth cancer than non-smokers uh, and drinkers. And if you are purely a, uh, an alcohol drinker and you don't smoke, then uh, you're six times likely to develop mouth cancer than a non-alcohol drinker. So again, the advice is to limit alcohol intake or to cut it out completely. For those who do not know what PAN is, it's a, uh, it's a habit within Southeast Asia predominantly, uh, that's India, Indian subcontinent, Pakistan and Taiwan and, and uh, the Southeast Asian countries where the use of um, the beetle uh, nut is, uh, as it's referred to, uh, is used routinely uh, as a habit, just like smoking and drinking is in um, uh, Western countries. So this picture sh uh, photograph shows the beetle, it's actually the beetle leaf, which is the green leaf you can see there. Um, the nut itself is the areca nut, and, which is carcinogenic, i.e. causes cancer. And there's uh, 